Hello, hi, it's me, it's Crystal, and this is a quarter one book haul part three, the last part, and this is covering books bought from the beginning of the year through the beginning of April. And I have 36 books in this haul, so we have quite a few books to get through, so let's just get started. And the first book I have is The Unbroken by C.L. Clark. This came in March's Illumicrate, and this is about this woman who is wanting to kick a usurper off of her throne, and so she enlists the help of this other woman um who is a soldier a warrior a turncoat to help her do so and since this is a limicrate of course we have the sprayed edges and then we have this going on with the naked hardcover and then we have our awesome tagline every empire demands revolution so the next book I have is The Ladies of the Secret Circus by Constance Sayers. I don't know a ton about this book, but it's a dual timeline book involving this dark secret circus in Paris in the past. And then in a more modern day plotline, we have this woman and her fiance goes missing. And then somehow her search for him leads her to this dark secret circus. Anyway, it sounds really interesting. But this book is really pretty. But then we have this going on just in case you want to see what the naked hardcover looks like because I do. But obviously I mostly was interested in this book because of the cover. But I also have another book by this author in this haul. And since I was interested in that book when I saw this one, I was like, let's just go ahead and get this one too. So speaking of constant Sayers, I also picked up A Witch in Time. So this is another multi-timeline book and it's about this woman who is bound to this other person. And so every time um, she kind of like dies tragically in one life, when she reincarnates into another life, um, this other person comes and finds her and then like they fall in love again and it's doomed again. And so... <laughs> And the more modern part of the timeline, she's having these uh, visions of all these other lives and this ill-fated love. And it sounds really interesting. It sounds like something that I would be really interested in. Also, one of the main reasons I picked this book up is I actually had a story I did that was pretty similar to this, like, when I was in high school. And I tried to write it, and it was just a huge mess. And so when I saw this, I was like, oh, this is kind of, like, the idea I had. So now I get to see, like, you know like a good version of that. It's not exactly like the story idea I have, but it's, it's similar. And so, yeah, I'm really excited about this. I really like one of the blurbs on the back. It says it's a page turning tale of love, reincarnation, and dark magic. I like speaking my language. And so next I picked up four books by Darcy Coates. These are all supernatural, horror books and paranormal books. And I picked up so many because Books a Million had a sale on certain books. If you buy two, you got one free. <laughs> so I picked up some books. And so I ended up um, picking up these three first. And then I went back later and got this one. Because they were out of this one um, the first time I went. But these two books have been on my TBR for a while. I don't know what they're about specifically. But I want to show you all of the books that I picked up. So I picked up The Haunting of Ashburn House. And I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Haunted House. Looks super fun. And I also picked up Craven Manor. Another haunted house. <laughs> and then and these two books go together. I think it's House of Shadows first. And then House of Secrets. Which is a sequel to House of Shadows. And so since I was going to get a book free. I went ahead and picked this one up. Because why not? And again we have haunted house books and you know I think in this one whatever was haunting them in the first book has followed them into the second book even though they tried to escape you can never escape so one of the next books I picked up is the one by John Mars and this is like a sci-fi thriller book I want to say about there's like this genetic soulmate test and if you take it, you can get your genetic soulmate, but some people's soulmates um, are not what they were expecting. And some people's soulmates might be psychopaths. So my sister read this last year and she thought I would like it. So I picked it up and this is also on my April TBR. So hopefully I will be talking about this in my April wrap up at the end of the month or beginning of next month or whatever. 
But the back of the book says that test results have led to countless breakups and changed the traditional ideas of dating, romance, and love. So we follow a few different couplings in this book and it sounds really exciting. I also picked up a couple of books by Jocelyn Jackson, but I'm going to talk about this smaller one first. And this is Never Have I Ever. And I think this is about this woman and her life is perfect. And then one day she's having a party with her friends and this woman shows up who's like new to the neighborhood. And I think this is a woman who knew the main character from her past. And she knows some things about this main character, some like dark things. And they play, they're playing this game and it just sounds really, really fun. And when I was reading the sample of this online before I pre-ordered the other book by Jocelyn Jackson that I picked up, I wanted to make sure I liked her writing and her narrative style which is something I should always do and not something that I always do. But anyway, oh my gosh, I was immediately in love and immediately engaged. So I'm really looking forward to this. So I want to say this is a suspense. Maybe there are some like supernatural elements involved. I'm not sure, but that's what it sounds like. So and next I picked up The Harpy by Megan Hunter. And this has a lot of really polarizing reviews, which I've decided at this point is a good way for me to find a book that I will love. So we'll see. Um, this story sounds like it's incredibly strange, as strange as this cover. But yeah, it's not a very long book. But I heard it has like this kind of whimsical, dark fairy tale kind of vibe. So basically what happens in this book is this woman finds out her husband cheated on her and so he gives her permission to hurt him in a few different kinds of ways. But each time she hurts him, I think she descends deeper and deeper into uh, what sounds like some weirdness and I'm here for this. <laughs> so I finally picked this up because I just cannot help myself. Yeah. So we have this gray cover and deckled edges. One of the blurbs on the back says that this is a fever dream and a gorgeous and alarming howl of rage. Love that for myself. So the first book I bought this year is Across the Green Grass Fields by Shauna McGuire. This is book six in the Wayward Children series, I think. There are unicorns in this one, but I've only read book one so far, but I loved it. So I'm just going to keep getting these and keep reading them. And they're short novellas about these people who have gone through portal worlds when they were children and they're still children, but now they're back in the real world. And some of them have been in their portal worlds like through old age and then they come back and they're the age they were when they left and it just really messes them up. And <laughs> You know, some people were gone for 50 years and then they come back and they've only been gone for three months. Some people go to their worlds and they were gone for three years and they come back and they were gone for three years. And so they're having trouble adjusting back to the real world. And so there is this home for where we're children. And these are their stories. Yeah. But also, let's go ahead and take a look under the jacket. I think most of the books have like some kind of symbol pressed in but this one doesn't it's just plain green but it's really pretty bright green and paper really leaning on that grass theme we love so next I have the Tower of Fools by Andres Sapkowski and I don't remember what this book is about looks like it's about some guy who's a healer a magician and according to some a charlatan this is part of a series um the Hussite trilogy I don't know, it sounded interesting and I decided I wanted to read more books by him. So I picked this one up. But yeah, it sounds like he gets caught up in a pending war and he is trying to escape this war without going insane, which sounds like it's something I would like. But yes, this is high fantasy, but I do like his writing um, or at least the translated version of his writing. So I'm looking forward to this. And I wasn't going to pick up this book yet, but I just couldn't help myself. So I think I'm going to put this on my May TBR. But this is The Midnight Library by Mott Haig. And it is about this woman. She tries to kill herself and she ends up in like this limbo world and at this library. And every single book holds a life of a different choice that she could have made. And so she can pick up the book and go into this life and live it. And if at any point she doesn't like it, she can come back to the library and make a different choice. And my birthday is in May, so I thought this would be a really good book to read around my birthday. 
So yes, this is a fantasy. And this is what the hardcover looks like. I like the way the blurb ends. It says, before time runs out, she must answer the ultimate question. What is the best way to live? Don't we all want to answer to that question? So the next book I have is The Lost Apocatary by Sarah Pinner. And as soon as I saw this cover, I was just like, I have to have this book. So I pre-ordered it. And this is a dual timeline book. So we have part of storyline taking place in the past. And there's this apocatary. And women can come in and get poisons to kill their husbands. And then the present day storyline, we have this historian and her research leads her to this apocatary. And then there's like some blending of the two storylines at some point in some way, which sounds intriguing. So that's why we get this book so we can find out what happens. It's not very long, but it is gorgeous. And then this is what our hardcover looks like. This really gorgeous blue. And then next I have The Charmed Wife by Olga Gresham. And I hardly ever browse the new release section of Barnes & Noble, but I decided I wanted to browse it one day to see if I could find anything interesting. And I saw this, and this is like fantasy, magical realism. It's a Cinderella retelling, but it's what happens after Cinderella has been married for a while. Speaking of poison, um, she decides one day that she wants to get rid of her husband. And so she goes, um, I think to this apothecary or to a witch to try to find something to slip her husband. And it sounds really interesting. And it's also not a very long book. And this is what our hardcover looks like. There's the author's initials branded on the front, which I like that. That's cool. So it sounds like it's going to be very magical and hilarious and a little dark. Or maybe a lot dark. And then I picked up The World That We Knew by Alice Hoffman. And I wasn't going to get this book yet. It was on my TBR, on my to buy list. But I was at Books A Million one day and I saw this on the sales table and I was like, hello, it's like $5 or something ridiculous. So I went ahead and picked this up and like I mentioned in my first book call video when I was talking about the book Orphan Monster Spy, I really tend to avoid books that have anything to do with the war. Um, but this book has something to do with a war. Um, which I think picking up this book is the reason why I was more willing to pick up Orphan Monster Spy because I picked this one up first and it's like a fantasy story set in World War II and somebody creates some kind of monster to like protect them and it sounds interesting. <laughs> this is a nice cover. Really nice spine. Just nice. And then we have deckled edges which I love. And this is what our hardcover looks like. We have this beautiful crane. Is that a crane? And a beautiful spine. So uh, these next books are going to be really heavy in suspense. So after I read one of these books earlier this year, which I'll get to when I get to it, I decided that I want to read more suspense books and that I feel like I'm becoming a fan. So I decided to go track down some more suspense books. And so I picked these books up largely through recommendations and what I saw people on my Goodreads friends list reading and then books that were similar to the books that I was already interested in buying. So I picked up two books by Taryn Fisher. The first book I picked up was The Wives and I read this book in February. <laughs> And it's one of those books, like, I gave it three stars, but it was, like, one of those books where it's, like, I like this, but... And the more I think about it, the more I like it. And I read this book almost in one sitting, which just, like, never happens for me. And it has just stuck with me. And I'm, like, I think I might love this book. Like, I'm not going to change my rating because that's just how I felt when I first finished it. But I want to read this book again. Like, I already want to read it again. And it's just it's so over the top. But it's about this woman named Thursday. And the concept for this book is Thursday is married to Seth. And Seth has two other wives. And none of the wives are allowed to contact each other. But one day, Thursday contacts Monday, whose name is Hannah. And Hannah is pregnant. And Hannah also has bruises. So now Thursday is like, oh my gosh, is my husband abusive? Is he hurting this woman? Do we even know who he is? And it's just so wild. It's so wild. And so after I read this, I'm like, I want to read more books by Taryn Fisher. And so I picked up The Wrong Family. 
So I think it's about this woman who all the blurb says was that she has a grim diagnosis and so she wants somewhere to live out the rest of her days in peace and so she moves in with this family but the family has like a lot of secrets and they're not who she thought they were but then she's not who they think she is either and so I think they both have like some crazy secrets and if it's anything like the wives I know that I will at least be entertained if nothing else. So then I picked a pretty little wife by Darby Kane and i really like this tagline there's more than one way to end a marriage so this is about a woman and the last time she saw her husband he was dead and now his body is missing and no one knows where he is and she's like really confused because she's like was he not dead did he get up and walk away does somebody steal his body and like do they know who killed them and are they trying to frame her or maybe maybe she killed her husband i don't know it's not clear so it sounds really really interesting and yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Sounds good. And then I picked up Hidden Bodies by Caroline Kepnes. And this is a sequel to You. Um, and I read You in March. And so I definitely want to read books two and book three, which I picked up books two and book three before I finished book one. <laughs> well, I pre-ordered book three. The book came out April 6th. Anyway. That was super entertaining and super fun. And so this continues the adventures of Dear Joe, who is crazy. And, you know, he's he's trying to be a good guy, we think. And he just keeps getting into trouble. I don't know. I'm here for it, though. And then, yeah, speaking of Caroline Katniss, I picked up a signed copy of You Love Me. And this is book three in the last book in the, the You Saga and yes, more adventures of Dear Joe. And so it's like, is the past going to catch up with him? Is he going to mend his ways? Is he going to change? Is he going to die? We don't know. But I want to know what happens. <laughs> and here's our signature. And this is what our hardcover looks like. Purple and black. I mean, I'm getting used to these two-toned covers. Still not my favorite though. <laughs> but yes, I'm excited about this. So getting away from suspense books for just a minute, I picked up Tidelands by Philippa Gregory and I don't know a lot about this book. I wanted to read this book called Dark Tides, I think it's the title, but then I found out that was book two so I decided to pick up book one and read that one first. And so I don't know a ton of what this book is about. I know it's about this woman and she meets this guy who's a spy and her husband is missing and so she's either waiting for news that he's dead or waiting for news that he's alive. And so she's not married, but she's not a widow and she's just kind of in this limbo and then she meets this guy and the guy turns out to be a spy. I don't know what kind of spy. I don't know if there's a war going on. I don't know if the main character is some kind of a witch because it mentions witch mania in the blurb. I don't really know. But if I'm interested in book two, then book one has to also be interesting, right? <laughs> Yeah, because the end of the blurb says this is the time of witch mania and if the villagers discover the truth, they could take matters into their own hands. So maybe she's some kind of a witch, not a supernatural witch because this is historical fiction. But still, some kind of a witch is still really, really interesting. And yeah, it's not that long. So I'm excited to branch out a little bit and see what this is about. I haven't read a Philippa Gregory book yet. And speaking of historical fiction, I also picked up The Widow Queen by Elzbieta Scherzinska. And this is a book translated from Polish. It sounds really interesting. Um, it's about this woman um, who is a real person. <laughs> So it's about this woman and she doesn't want the traditional life that will be laid out to her as a nobleman's daughter. And so she wants to take matters into her own hands and carve her own path through life, which we love. <laughs> I was reading a little bit of it online. Um, it sounded really interesting and I definitely wanted to read more. So I picked this book up and then we just have a classic black and this gorgeous lettering on the spine. And we also get these lovely maps at the beginning. There's a couple of them. Based on the title, I'm assuming that she probably does get married at some point and her husband dies. I don't know how her husband dies. I don't know if she kills her husband or maybe she hires someone to kill her husband or maybe she just gets lucky. <laughs> I don't know. But it sounds really interesting. And this cover is so gorgeous and haunting. And yes, I'm very excited about this book. 
So back to suspense books. Um, I saw this. I want to say I saw this on Goodreads and it's called They Never Learn by Lane Fargo and it's about this woman who works at a university and every year she picks like the worst guy on campus and kills him and so now the authorities have come to her door and but she's like really smart and she's covered her tracks well and she's gotten away with it for years and so she's pretty confident that she can continue getting away with it. I don't know it just sounds really really fun. And apparently, I like I like bad I like bad women I like bad girls doing bad things for maybe a kind of good reason. <laughs> yeah, the beginning of the blurb says Scarlett Clark is an exceptional English professor, but she's even better at getting away with murder. This sounds so fun, <laughs> so so fun. And this is what our cover looks like: classic black with shiny spine. And then next I have The Girls Are All So Nice Here by Lori Elizabeth Flynn. And this is about um, these girls that go to their 10 year college reunion. And when they're there, someone is stalking them and leaving them notes um, about something that they did their senior year of college. And it sounds fun. <laughs> bad girls doing bad things. And I'm pretty sure this is another classy black what a shiny spine. I'm pretty sure I also pre-ordered this book as well. So next I picked up White Ivy by Susie Yang and, and this is about this Chinese American girl and she her mother kind of feels like she's getting in with the wrong crowd and sends her to live with her grandmother but it turns out her grandmother is like into some other stuff and teaches her basically how to be a crook and so she goes back to America and she um meets up with someone that she knew from high school and she sees this as her chance to get back in with these rich people and maybe marry one of them and get to be rich by marriage and experience all the things that the rich people have that we think is so amazing um it sounds interesting i think this is like maybe like a dark contemporary suspense book it sounds really interesting <laughs> the blurb says that it's an exploration of class, race, and identity. And that it's compelling and unnerving. Sounds like it's right up my alley. Also, I just noticed because I have not opened this book yet. Look at that end paper. Oh my gosh. What is that? And we have classy black, shiny spine. But hello, what is this? That is gorgeous. And then I picked up The Divines by Ellie Eaton. And I don't know a ton about this book. I know it's about this woman and she went to this prep school. So it has dual timelines. So I think this is like a dark contemporary psychological suspense maybe. And so as an adult, she finds herself um, at this property at the ruins of her school. I think it was some kind of fancy prep school or boarding school or something and so like she's reminiscing about the past and it sounds dark and based on this cover it's trippy and this is what our hardcover looks like but yeah it sounds really interesting and I'm all here for some dark contemporary books and then next I picked up People Like Her by Ellery Lloyd and this is about this woman who is on Instagram and I think she like Instagram's mom life and there was someone who was like obsessed with her feed and then like one day when she's like scrolling through her feed and looking at her pictures she sees this guy peering into the window in the background of one of her photographs and it sounds really, really disturbing. And so this is like a thriller and it's like, who is this guy? And I don't know if this other woman who is obsessed with her is going to try to help. I don't know, but it sounds really dark and twisted. So check this out. And this is what our cover looks like. And then next I picked up another book by Carolyn Kepnes. And this was another book that was on the discount table at Books A Million. And again, I was like, I was just looking at this book and thinking about buying it and then I go on Books A Million and then there it is on sale. So I think this is a book about this guy 
and he has his best friend and he wants to like finally confess to his best friend that he's in love with her and then like he goes missing and then he returns four years later with no memory of what has been going on the last four years but like everyone else you know they've mourned him they've moved on and so he's trying to figure out what's going on but it also sounds like he might have like some heightened abilities and so like he becomes like a vigilante or something that's what it sounds like so Caroline Kempness has my trust after reading you so why not <laughs> and this is what our book looks like and so next I picked up The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins this is a dark contemporary suspense book that is a Jane Eyre retelling if you're familiar with Jane Eyre then you know why it's called The Wife Upstairs <laughs> So it's about this woman and she meets this charming rich guy and she gets swept off, swept away into romance and they fall in love and get married. But once they're married, she discovers that he has a dark secret. And I'm really interested in reading a Jane Eyre retelling because I haven't read one before. And I love Jane Eyre as a story. So it's not that long. It sounds right up my alley. It sounds really interesting. And this is what our book looks like pretty blue of course the blurb said this is a vivid reimagining of one of literature's most twisted love triangles is it a love triangle i'm excited though so next i picked up three books by elisa jewel and i just you know heard some good things and it started with me finding this one uh, on the discount table at books a million and I've had this on my TBR for a while and I added it to my TBR I'm like oh if I'm ever in the mood to read a suspense book or a thriller I'll pick this up well I'm in the mood now but it sounds really interesting it's about this woman who's 25 and I think she was an orphan and so one day she gets home from work and she finds this letter that she thinks will tell her who she is and where she comes from and 25 years ago like I think her family was murdered and the baby was left squalling up scares and so she was the baby and so now she goes back um to this property and I don't know what's going on but I want to find out and it sounds interesting and this cover so nice and then this is what our book looks like and so then I decided to pick up The Invisible Girl since this was also in my TBR. Um, I have a couple more of her books in my TBR, but I thought let's just start with a couple and then go on from there. <laughs> so I think this follows a family and their dad is a psychologist and one of his daughters thinks that she's getting stalked by the creepy guy who lives next door. And I think like the dad is maybe not as upstanding as a citizen as he appears. I don't know what's going on, but it sounds interesting. So we are going to find out. And this cover is also so pretty. I wasn't going to pick this book up yet either, but I saw it at Barnes & Noble one day and I'm like, let's just go ahead and get it since I had a gift card and I was feeling rich. And then we have a classic navy blue. Yeah. So the last Lisa Jewel book I picked up is Watching You. And I think this is about the suburbs, which we all know that it's nice and as quaint as the suburbs can be that people can be hiding secrets behind their doors. I live in the suburbs. So the reason I wanted to pick this book up and what was drawing my interest was that it mentioned this woman who was obsessed with this English teacher. And so she's stalking him and while she's stalking him, she sees something disturbing and then she goes missing. And so I don't know if the disturbing thing is about him because there's a rumor that um, he had an affair with a student years ago. So I don't know what's going on, but I'm here for it. It sounds dark and twisty and thrilling. And of course, this is what our book looks like. Might as well look at it. So the other Jocelyn Jackson book I picked up, and the reason why I picked up Never Have I Ever is because I saw this. And I was immediately like, oh my gosh, what is this? So it's Mother May I, and it is about this woman with the perfect life. And she has a beautiful family and she has a newborn baby boy. And every time I think about this boy, it gives me the creeps. But here we go. So one night she sees this witch staring in her window. 
and then her baby boy goes missing in order to get him back the witch asks her to do something that seems very simple and easy but when she does it it has like these catastrophic ripple effects and i'm like oh my gosh it sounds so good so this is like a supernatural-esque thriller and i decided to go ahead and get the signed copy because why not so we have this and this is what our hardcover looks like and i am really excited about this book check out this tagline revenge doesn't wait for permission it just sounds so so good and i'm like how have i never heard of this author before and yeah i really like her writing so i'm looking forward to this and so the last book in this haul is not a thriller well it might be a thriller <laughs> But we have The Drowning Kind by Jennifer McMahon. And this was another book that I pre-ordered. I saw this cover and I was like, oh my gosh, what is this beautiful nonsense? And it sounds like it's about this woman who inherits some property from a family member, but like the property is like cursed. And so anyone in the family who says found the property, like they're also cursed. And so it sounds like it's like a supernatural thriller, like maybe a ghost thriller, maybe something that's haunted. I don't know, but it sounds really beautiful and dark. And it sounds like it's right up my alley and like something I would absolutely love. So yeah, I picked this book up right away because it's gorgeous and it sounds great. And yeah. And this is what it looks like. You have this nice cloudy gray, which I think is probably pretty fitting for what the book sounds like it's about. So this concludes the book haul and these are all the books that I bought so far this year. But yes, let me know if you've read any of these books, if you have any of these books on your radar, or if you found a new book to add to your TBR because we love a growing TBR. And yeah, like this video if you liked it. Let me know what you're thinking and I'll see you guys next week. And I hope you have a great rest of the week and a great weekend. And yeah. Bye.